Welcome back to We Love This Book. Today we are really excited to have the Schwab, or Victoria, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my alter ego, here with us um, to talk a bit about your new book, A Darker Shade of Magic, yeah. which I completely loved. I normally don't, in these <laughs> interviews, go off on one about how much I love the book, but hopefully you'll notice that a couple of weeks ago it was actually our book of the week in the We Love This Book newsletter. So we're super excited to talk to you about oh, it. Thank you so much. That was a really exciting thing to see when it showed up in my inbox. I was like, oh, awesome. <laughs> Um, so first of all, I guess, can you just tell us a bit about the book? Yeah, so um, it is A Darker Shade of Magic. It's the first in a fantasy series, uh, and it is about a magician who has the ability to move between multiple versions of London. And officially, he's a courier for his crown, and unofficially, he's a smuggler. And so the book is about what happens when he comes into possession of something he absolutely should not have, only to have his pocket picked by a teenage girl named Delilah Bard. And what was the element that kind of first kind of popped into your head which bit was yeah. it a character or the world i had this image in my head of a boy walking straight through a wall and colliding with a girl dressed okay. as a boy okay. and kind of what happens between the collision of these two characters and of course that spawned a lot of questions in my head about how can he walk through the wall what is he doing why is he running and what does she take? One of the things that I loved about the book was the world. So obviously we're not going to do any proper spoilers, but I think we can say that there are four yeah. Londons. There are four Londons. There's grey, red, white, and black. Yeah. And this idea is that they're layered together like pages in a book, that you have to move through them in order, and that black was the closest to the source of power, and something terrible happens there, and so black is no longer... A thing and then white London is very starved of magic has a very toxic relationship with magic because of its proximity to black and so it's very harsh climate very it breeds it breeds cruelty mm -hmm. in a sense uh, because of the kind of world that it is red London is our main London not our London mm -hmm. that's gray London but the London that Kel our main character is from and it's this rich luscious environment where magic is thriving and and really in balance and then gray london is ours it's mm -hmm. kind of a place where magic has been forgotten and it's circa 1819 oh, okay yeah okay. <laughs> did you have a favorite london to write about oh yeah so it's not very popular my favorite is white everyone okay. loves red because it's like this really luscious like yeah vivid place and it's wonderful but white london is so cruel and dark and i kind of like the sadistic dane twins that rule <laughs> white london and they are terrifying uh, oh yeah straight up i wanted yeah. to write some straight up sadists those kind of magical fights mm -hmm. um, um which are really just creative and fun and so do you enjoy writing those very kind of Brutal yeah, scene. I like writing the, the the fight scenes and the murders. Like the kissing <laughs> scenes are kissing scenes are much harder for me to write. I'm like, okay, okay. but like let's kill people off okay. in really creative ways. There are some very creative things <laughs> in, in this. Yeah, I just I think that I'm a really cinematic writer. Like okay. I visualize a scene before I write it okay. and kind of choreograph it. Mm -hmm. And so fight scenes work well for me because that's how I think through it. I mm -hmm. kind of go through the beats of the scene and think through what cues need to be hit so that hopefully when a reader is reading, they can really visualize what I'm writing. Yeah. Do you have actors yeah. that you would like dream cast? It's so funny because normally I do, and with A Darker Shade there are actors who are visual inspirations, okay. but at their younger selves. So I don't okay. actually know right. that they would they would be good actors, but like Kel is based on a very young Lee Pace. Like he's oh, inspired. Okay, There's a picture okay. of Lee Pace with reddish hair from okay. one of his early days, and he's got a coat. And it's because I think I'm obsessed with outerwear. Like coats show up in all of my books. Like, okay. and of course Kel has a magical <laughs> yeah. coat that has more than two sides, and I love that coat. But there's a Ned from Pushing Daisies, which was one of Lee Pace's very early roles has this amazing black trench coat and I think that it just got stuck in my head yeah. at some point. I'm always amazed at which actors readers come up with or they okay. put into fan edits mm -hmm. and fan mixes. Those are my favorites. Yeah. I just love seeing how other people visualize it. Mm -hmm. One thing, you kind of touched on this, yeah. the idea of obviously Lila just as, as a boy and I really enjoyed the way that you kind of play with obviously the they're not, they don't always act in this sort of gender stereoty mm -hmm. stereotypical way and like sort of in charge a lot. And yeah. how kind of consciously was that something you were wanting very, to play with? Okay. Very, well, so Kel, I knew from the beginning that Kel was going to be my emotional boy. Okay. Like, he's got a lot of feelings yeah. and he has a lot of, like, he's very sensitive. Yeah. He's very, he's kind of like me in that he's kind of sarcasm blind. Like, he just, he's authentic. And I wanted Lila to be a character that 
I mean, gender is so irrelevant to her. When they, she does finally get the chance to go to a masquerade ball, and she goes to pick out her outfit, and everyone would assume like she's going to pick out like this fancy dress, and she picks out the nicest menswear she yeah, can yeah. buy, and she's so excited to have yeah. like a proper gentleman's coat. It's just her. Mm-hmm. It's just her. I mean, I, I wanted to play with someone who broke the gender stereotypes and broke the gender roles. Mm-hmm. So, two more questions. Yeah. Firstly, can you tell us anything about what's happening next? Um, so I just turned in the first revision on the sequel to A Darker Shade of Magic, which the title and cover of which I think are going to be revealed in about within the month, I think. I, I'll just go ahead and say, but Lila is on the covers for okay, book awesome. two in, in some incredible garb. Like, okay, she's just awesome. glorious. The one thing I will say, I don't think I get in trouble for saying this, is that Book two uh, picks up four months after book one ends, okay, okay. and so it, it's almost, it's a direct sequel, but if there's a tiny gap to kind of recover from the events <laughs> of book one, and uh, it involves a magical tournament, and that is something I'm like incredibly, incredibly excited about. Okay, so, very yeah. excited. And lots of, there's pirates, and uh, there's some kissing, but not the people you would think would be kissing. Ooh. There's a lot of random hooking up with <laughs> different characters. Excellent. Yeah. And we will see Black London. That's the only other thing I will okay. say. So we will see Black London. Because I think people got to the end of book one and they're like, well, where was Black yeah. London? And I was like, it's a series. It's yeah. okay, I yeah. promise. That was my reaction. Awesome. And the very last question yeah. is, what are you reading at the moment? Oh, goodness. So many things. I, I was just saying, I just finished The Dead House, which is up there. And it comes out in four months, I think. And it's okay. fabulous. And then I just finally finished uh, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony oh, Doerr, okay. and I really loved it. I've been hearing lots of good things about it. It was incredible. Okay. Just very uniquely written, beautiful. I cared about the characters. Mm-hmm. And now I'm actually reading The Lindbergh Legacy by Sarah Reese Brennan. And goodness, I've read like 35 books so far this year, okay. so I've always tried to remember what I <laughs> okay. But yeah, I'm, I'm good, really, in, I loved All the Light We Cannot See. Okay, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for of coming course. and talking to us. Um, yeah, so A Dark Shade of Magic is out now. Yes, please and go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is coming. We can expect that. February, next February. Okay. okay. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel and check out welovethisbook.com for more bookie content.